Hi, I'm Marco Schwartz from the website Open Home Automation and today I will speak about a tutorial about how to design your own Arduino shield and this will be a, um, a part of um, three videos about how to design your own Arduino shield and part one which you are actually watching um, is about planning your project and part two will be about uh, the design of the shield itself and part three will be more about um, the fabrication of the shield and the testing. So just to, to show you what you can do, um, what you will be able to do after um, this tutorial is, is this. This is um, one shield I designed myself. I call it the weather shield because it has many sensors uh, relative to measuring data about the, the weather, like the temperature, luminosity, humidity, and uh, barometric pressure. And I will use this example in the world tutorial, tutorial to guide you and show you what, how to do a shield. The weather shield, uh, what I wanted to do is to be able to measure for se from several sensors at once. So temperature, pressure, humidity and ambient light. And it's a perfect uh, shield to learn uh, home automation of course, but also how to design shields. So why should you build your own shields? That's a good question. Well, first of all, it's, I think it's really fun. Uh, I was really excited when, um, when the UPS um, delivery guy showed up and gave me, gave me my first uh, PCBs uh, for this shield. It was so cool to see, to actually see what I designed on my computer, to receive it and I, then I could solder my components on it and I could test the shield and it was really a, a lot of fun. Also a breadboard which is the thing I, I always use um, for my videos and on my website. Well, it's cool for prototypes, but it's not so nice if you want to integrate it really in your home. And also that's my third point, it will look better to have a nice design shield sitting on your Arduino board. Uh, that's much better than just having some component uh, on a breadboard. So when you design a shield, the question to us is, what do you want on your shield? Well, maybe you want some sensors. Um, I show, this is um, on the right, my temperature sensor that I use on the shield. You can also have some actuators that can add on the, on the physical world. You can just display a signal like LEDs, it can be a, a relay, a motor. And you can have other components like LCD, screens, uh, chip to communicate with other components like Bluetooth chip. So you really have to make a list of everything you, you want on your shield. Also you have to make sure that you have enough pins. So the Arduino board, uh, I will take the example of the Arduino uh, Uno board, it's quite limited. I mean you, you have to think about it. So you have to see if you have enough digital and analog pins for the project. This usually it's okay, but if you use something like PWM, so pulse with modulation, do you have enough of these pins? And it may be even more critical if you need to use interrupts. Do you have enough um, interrupt pins? So all of this you have to, to figure out before uh, actually designing the shield. So for the weather shield, I will give you an example. So I have this guy, the temperature sensor, which is an analog sensor, the photo resistor to, to get the ambient light, it's also analog. This guy uh, for the barometric pressure, this, this is a digital sensor. And finally, I have this sensor for humidity, which also deliver an analog value as an output. So in my case, well, I just have three analog sensors 
and I have six inputs available on my board, so it's it's fine. Also, I have one digital sensor with an I2C interface, which is also fine for the Arduino Uno board. Then you have to consider that you need additional components on your board, where it can be small resistors as I represented on this picture, it can be capacitances that you need for some of your chips you want to integrate on your shield. And also what you, sh you should not forget is pin headers, like I show you on the right. So these pin headers will allow you to connect, actually connect your shield to the Arduino board. Finally, what you have to consider is is your shield you are designing, is it compatible with other shields? Well, for example, what you want to do is use a shield with many sensors and then use the official Arduino Ethernet or Wi-Fi shield to communicate the values from the sensors to the web. So you have to check which pins are already used by the, by the shield you want um, to use with your shield. So you can just go and online and check this on the official page of the shield um, you want to stack on top uh, or on the bottom of your own shield. So I will go back to my example. I want to use my weather shield in combination with the Arduino Wi-Fi shield because it just makes sense to communicate to the web or to my smartphone some information about uh, my home. So on the official page, I saw that pins 4, 7, 10 are already used by the shield and cannot be used by my own shield. And 11, 12, and 13 are used for the digital SPI interface. So I really have to make sure that these pins are reserved for the SPI interface and I don't use them for anything else. So that was already it for uh, this first part of the tutorial. So about how to plan uh, what you want to integrate on your Arduino shield. And in the next part, um, part two, we will focus on actually designing the PCB. So the printed circuit board of the shield. So I will show you how to do the schematics and uh, to do the layout of your shield step by step. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't hesitate to comment and I will see you in part two.